The Little Piano Girl. The night she left Georgia, Mary couldn't see anything but lights out the train window, but she could hear. She listened to the train and clapped out its sound on her knees. She sang the sound of its whistle. Chugga, 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 toot, toot. The train went faster, leaving home behind. Clackety, clack, clackety, clack, clackety, clack. Mary clapped and sang softly so that Mama and her sister Mamie could sleep. By the time they arrived at the big station in Pittsburgh the next morning, Mary had sung herself to sleep too. More than anything else, Mary loved music. Back in Atlanta, her Mama had played the organ for their church. Sometimes she played at home too. When Mary was three, Mama played a tune, holding Mary on her lap. As the last note sounded through the room, Mary reached out and played them back to her mother. Mama stood up and Mary went tumbling. Mama cried to her neighbors, Come hear this! Come hear my baby girl play! After that, Mary was always at the keyboard. When she pounded the keys, she made thunder. When she tapped them, it rained. Sounds rose up from her playing, soft like the sun beaming, sharp like frogs calling, lonely like train whistles in the night, all from a place safe and secret inside. But when the family moved from Atlanta to Pittsburgh, the organ stayed behind. It's just too big and heavy, Mama said. We'll have to sell it. They took their Victrola with the megaphone so Mary could listen to music. But without her organ, how could she play? The Smoky City, that's what people call Pittsburgh. A war was going on and the nation needed steel for ships and guns. There were jobs in the Pittsburgh steel mills. Their smokestacks poured fumes into the sky high above the Monongahela River and the Allegheny Mountains and all the wooden houses tucked in around them. Aunt Hattie and Uncle Joe Epster lived in one of those houses. They welcomed Mary and her mother and sister. But the neighbors didn't want any newcomers, and someone threw bricks through the Epsters' windows. Others called the family mean names. The neighbor girl with the long curls shut the door in Mary's face. My mother says not to play with you, she said. Seven-year-old Mary didn't have shoes for her first day at Lincoln School, so she borrowed her mother's. Mama had dainty feet, size two. Mary's heels stuck out of the back of her mother's shoes. A big, scary girl pulled her hair. Where'd you get those funny shoes? Ugly names and cruel words. Mary called them bad sounds. And she taught herself to play them out. Even without a keyboard, she could do it. Tapping on the tabletop, she beat back the bad sounds and sang out her sadness. She crooned and whispered and shouted out until her spirit was lifted free. exactly how it all started, how Mary began playing piano again. One story goes like this. She was picking dandelions one day. Lucille, a lady everyone knew from church, walked by. Say, why aren't you off with your friends? Lucille asked. Mary just shook her head and couldn't say. Lucille shifted the bag on her hip. I've got some ice cream in this bag, she said. If you don't come and help me eat it, it'll melt. Big brown eyes grew wide. Yes, ma'am, she said. She sat down at the table in Lucille's house. The lace tablecloth covered it, and the dishes all matched. Best of all, a shiny piano stood in the corner of the room. Mary's shy eyes stole glances at it. You play the piano, Annie? Lucille asked. Mary nodded. Okay, girl, said Lucille. Play me a tune. Mary sat down and lifted the cover. She drew a shaky breath, and her 
fingers found the keys. They hadn't forgotten a thing. Soon she was riding those keys, playing a tune that rumbled along like a freight train. Lord have mercy, said Lucille. The teacup jumped in her hand. She went to the stairs and called up, Cephas, come down here and hear this child play. But Cephas was already halfway down the stairs. Mary's music bounced right out the windows of Lucille's house to the ears of all the people sitting on the front steps. They gathered round to hear the heartbeat of Mary's music, the bittersweet ballads, the sorrowful spirituals. Play one for me, baby, they begged. Play Roll Jordan Roll. Soon people were paying her to play, as much as 50 cents. Mary hid away all the money they gave her. She saved it for shoes. At school, Mary's teacher, Miss Mill Holland, hummed marches for her. Can you play that for the children when it's time to go upstairs? So Mary did. But sometimes she slipped a boogie beat into those marches. The children stopped marching and danced on the stairs. It seemed everyone knew about the little piano girl. Everyone but her family. They found out when she broke her arm. Mamie balanced a bottle on top of a wooden box. Jump over it, she dared Mary. When Mary fell, pain shot through her arm like lightning. In the weeks while her arm was healing, people came and knocked on her front door. Where's the little piano girl, they asked. Can't she come to my house to play? Fletcher Burley, Mary's sandy-haired stepfather from Georgia, bought her a player piano. He put it in their parlor. Fletcher bought ragtime piano rolls by James P. Johnson and Jelly Roll Morton so Mary could listen to them. In his deep, mellow voice, he sang along to My Mama Pinned a Rose on Me. Mary listened. Now play it back to me, sugar, he said. And she did. She watched the piano play, too, and her fingers found the same notes. All she had to do was hear a tune or see it play, and she would wrap her fingers around it and never let go. Soon Mary could tease a tune out of nowhere. Sassy sounds slipped into her playing, sounds that surprised her. Truck drivers stopped in the street when they heard Mary play. Passing policemen paused. Mary bashed beauty out of those piano keys. Her notes took wing over her East Liberty neighborhood till Pittsburgh's millionaires heard them in their mansions. When Mary cut loose, people couldn't stay still. They set to clapping, tapping, finger snapping. Her blue notes made people want to cry at just how hard life can be. Her crazy chords made people shimmy their shoulders and shake their heads high and happy. Play it, Mary, folks called out. Play the tiger rag. And Mary would play a deep, powerful bass with one hand and lay a lacework of edgy blues over the top of it with the other. Her music rolled and slid and jumped along zigzagging and giant stepping until it grew too big for where she was. For almost 60 years, Mary traveled from Kansas City to Paris. She boogied and bebopped with the best, with all the kings and dukes and earls of jazz. And while her fingers hopscotched across the keyboard, banishing the bad sounds, her toes tap time in beautiful shoes.